got a few items that Nightcore have sent in, so we're going to start off with the EDC29. I'm going to try and keep this video as short as possible, but put as much information in it as I can. This is one of their newly updated versions on the EDC line, and it's got quite a powerful output at 6,500 lumens. Some of the included items, we have a Type A to Type C charging cable. There's your warranty card and your user guide. They've also included a nice quality paracord style lanyard or wrist strap. We'll just peel off the OLED display screen covering. The body styling on this has a bit more heft to it and you can certainly feel it is a bit heavier than previous versions I've looked at. Nightcore say they're using the stainless steel on the front and back with a carbon reinforced frame. Both of the switches are two stages. They have a similar feel to the EDC25, in other words, there's a decent amount of resistance on them. If you want to, you can remove the clip off the back. You can see there's a couple of bolts there holding it in place. And there's the opening there for the wrist strap. Quite a strong clip on the back as per previous versions, no complaints in that regard. There's a lockout switch on the side, and I do like that. It makes it very easy to enter the full lockout mode. Got an interesting design on the front. It sort of looks like heat sinks really at the top and at the bottom, and they've also got a bit of grip there on the side parts. This does support A to C and C to C charging, takes about an hour and 15 to 20 minutes to charge. We've got the newly upgraded Night Lab LEDs, and you can see at the front there is a proximity sensor. Quick look at the UI a full press is on and off with a half press to cycle through the power levels. Custom button depends on what you have it set to. A half press will give you the spotlight, but a full press can be the floodlight or the strobe. There is an option to change that setting. And I'll just show you that sensor. If it's over 400 lumens and it's turned on, it will drop the power down. You have a momentary low output with a half press on the power switch. And this is how you change the custom button function. Full press the custom switch and then full press the power switch and you'll see it go through both of the options. To get to the half lockout, push the custom button down and then slide that side switch up. And that disables the main power switch but the custom switch does work. If you want a full lockout and that locks both of the switches out, simply just slide up the switch on the side. And I do really like that design, it is very useful. Half press the power switch to get a battery and voltage display. Once you go through the power levels, it will give you an estimated runtime and it will tell you which mode you are in. It is just an approximate runtime, although it does seem to be reasonably accurate. If you engage the search or the floodlight mode at the high output, there will be a timer that counts down and you'll see the display bar go down quite quickly, only lasts around about six or seven seconds. Once you release the switch, you'll see that bar go up. It depends on the temperature. It seems to be temperature sensor. Moving on to the beam shops, we're looking at the TH10R, and it has a sort of standard mixed beam output. You'll note with the EDC29 that it does have a warm tint in the middle. It is also quite a floody light output because we've got textured reflectors. But it depends on the mode that you're in because obviously we do have that spotlight mode. But you'll see it does drop down quite quickly. You get around about 7 seconds out of both of these modes. The lumen shield is the flood output and that's just the maximum total output. And you get not quite as much range but a very wide spread as well. Have a look at the beam shots and I'll give you my quick summary in a moment.
few thoughts with the EDC29. Very happy with the build quality and I do like the side switch lockout. That's very useful. I think the beam output is pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of the tint. It is a bit on the yellow side, at least in the middle, but it does vary depending on the power level that you're at. The non-replaceable battery is a bit of a problem for me. I would really like to see someone come along and make one of these with a user replaceable battery. But uh, that's just my opinion. Do let me know what you think of this in the comments section. Be interested to hear your thoughts. Hopefully that video is useful to you. I've tried to keep it as short as possible. Thank you to everyone who is watching and supporting the channel. It is appreciated and I hope to see you in the next video.